setting Washington's agenda. The Morning Majority, 5 to 9 on 630 WMAL. 837 on WMAL. It's Brian Neiman, Michael Steele, former head of the RNC, Lieutenant Governor of Maryland in the House. All right, coming down to the wire. <laughs> That's right. Larry Cutler joins us now from uh, CNBC fame. You can watch him 7 o'clock on the Cutler Report, also on the call 11 o'clock this morning. And you can hear him on the radio, one of my favorite radio uh, shows on the weekend, Saturday nights at 7 o'clock here on WML, Larry Cudlow Radio Show. Morning, Larry. Thank you, Brian. Hello, Michael. Hey, how you doing there, sir? Good, 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 good. So, Painter really put the wood down last night. I was going to ask you about that. He was up <laughs> in your neck of the woods in New York last night, essentially saying, okay, we'll raise the debt ceiling, but we need to get concessions, and essentially saying any budget cuts have to be larger than any increase in the debt ceiling. Right. That's the key point. He really put a, um, a marker you know, laid down a marker in the sand. And I think it'll be very interesting to see what the reaction is from the White House and the Senate Democrats on this, because this is the most explicit uh, idea that the GOP has put down. He couldn't be any clearer, and he's saying, look, we don't want to default on the debt. That would be irresponsible. But it would be equally irresponsible not to stop the uh, momentum of future debt increases without some serious reforms. And The first one is going to be, you want to raise the debt ceiling? Fine. But you're going to have to cut spending to uh, offset that debt increase. The second one he mentioned, without being quite as clear, is uh, some kind of spending limit or spending cap or budgetary reform. He didn't really lay that out as much. The third thing he said was no taxes. Mm -hmm. Forget taxes. That's off the table. Well, is that is that really going to be uh, the bargaining position going into this thing? I mean, at the end of the day, you you still got to get through the Senate, and you still got to get a president who's going to sign off on this. So, how serious is this, or is this just more appeasement to the to the right wing ideologues out there? As some folks like to claim, or is this real a serious uh, approach by Republicans to to really hold the president and Democrats' feet to the proverbial deficit fire? You know those right-wing Tea Party types, Michael. That you, that's me. I, it's me too. <laughs> I mean, look, I look. You know, that's what, me. <laughs> the deal I bargained uh, going around the country in 2010 was a hundred billion dollar cut, right? Not 38 billion dollar that turned into 328 million. So, how yeah. real is this? Listen, Boehner's the speaker. He is the Republican leader in the Congress in both houses, and. I can only assume that he says what he means and means what he says, and that this is the GOP position now. Yeah, but they, okay, that's the GOP position, but relative to what the Democrats are prepared to do, is that a position of strength, or is that a position just to posture for noise and effect? Well, I think it's a, I think it's a great position of strength. I mean, no one's ever tried this before. It's a very novel idea. I know the people that work through this with John Boehner. I think the world of Boehner, I think the guy's just tremendous, very courageous. And what's inside there is that they may not get a one-year extension or one-year increase in the debt bill. They might have to do it in smaller increments. Mm. They might have to do it in three months or six months. That's very possible. But each step of the way, any increase in the debt ceiling must be accompanied by at least as much in spending cuts. So... You can do this. It could play out in many different scenarios, but that's the position. I think it's a great position. Oh, but I, I thought if you did a piecemeal, though, that the, the markets and the, uh, the global economy wouldn't take kind to, to doing that on a step-by-step basis. I don't think the markets care one bit about this. I mean, there's no evidence that, the, for example, Treasury rates are rock bottom now. They're approaching 3%. They were 4% about a year ago, and they were 380 about, I don't know, six months ago when the Fed started QE2. So this is not really a market event yet, what? and I don't, I, I, I don't. People understand that the Treasury Department has plenty of resources to finance uh, vital obligations like paying interest on the debt or Social Security or Medicare, and all this talk, this scare talk, uh, by the Treasury Department and/or the White House is just that. It's just scare talk. Revenues are coming in, by the way, at a picked-up pace, at a, at a very strong pace, uh, because the economy is throwing off more jobs and corporate profits and capital gains. So they're all throwing off sizable revenues that can be used to meet our government obligations without any danger of default. Now, this is not a bond market issue per se. This is a fiscal and spending policy mm-hmm. issue and debt policy issue. That's what this is. And uh, Boehner's laying down the line. He's uh, putting the line in the sand. Here's my question. Maybe, Michael, you can help out on this one as well. 
all right, he wants trillions of dollars worth of cuts. Where are they going to come from, number one, and what is it going to be tied to? Is it going to be the 2012 budget, or is this going to be something that's completely separate? And, and, and did, before you get there, and what about this whole piece on on spend, on spend taxes? Because the Democrat counter to, could be, okay, great, we will give you uh, you know more cuts, but we also want to now no, increase well, taxes. Well, was very clear about that last night. No taxes, period. And, by the way, in terms of the spending window, uh, it's a five-year window. It's what they're looking at, mm-hmm. a five-year spending window to achieve the, um, the budget cuts. But he was very clear, and they said no taxes. And that includes, I assume, this business about uh, eliminating deductions or credits, you know, the home mortgage deduction, so-called tax expenditures, which if you eliminate that without lowering marginal tax rates on the other oh, side, killer. then that is a whopping tax increase, oh, huge. pure and simple. Yeah. And so the White House somehow is trying to say, well, you know, these deductions are really cutting spending through the tax code. Uh, that may be true in a narrow sense, but in terms of damaging the economy in a broader sense, uh, eliminating deductions can be very painful unless they are accompanied uh, by marginal rate reductions uh, for tax reform. All right, that's an important point. I want to make sure we clarify this. Are you saying that Boehner took that off the table, saying that lo- that they they won't lower the rates and get rid of the? No, no, Boehner's rate? for tax reform. Okay, he's just saying don't give me any halfway tax reform when you eliminate deductions without lowering rates. Okay, so that's still on the table for Boehner's, just as long as you lower the rates. Well, yeah, but his uh, in terms of the debt ceiling, you're not going to get a tax reform bill in the next three months. That's really more for the broader 2012 budget debate. What John Boehner is saying is for the debt ceiling, uh, narrowly defined, is that we're not going to take a tax hike. Now, that goes to this point. The White House wants a deficit target. A deficit target could include tax increases. The Republicans want spending targets or spending caps, which would exclude uh, tax increases, a very significant difference. Huge. So where do you think this ends up? Where, where are we going to be in three months? I think they're going to win. I think they won on the continuing resolution. They didn't get all the cuts they wanted, but they won. I think they won last uh, December on extending the Bush uh, tax cut mm-hmm. and getting rid of the trillion-dollar omnibus spending package. I think they'll win this, too. I so think if they win this, what does that do for Obama and his and his base? Well, listen, I don't know. I mean, President Obama will have to deal with his own base. I don't think he's going to have much trouble now. I think the whole deal about killing uh, bin Laden has helped him with the country. But on economic issues, uh, the president's got a lot of trouble. He polls very badly on the economy. So the number one issue seems to be, A, economy and jobs, and B, uh, spending and, and borrowing. So he'll have to deal with that. I mean, that Republicans know where their bread is buttered, and they've come out with a very strong statement. And I admire Mr. Boehner for it. I think John's doing a heck of a job. All right, Larry. Great to talk to you as always. Thanks for coming on the show. All right. I'm Thanks, Larry. Larry Cudlow, host of Cudlow Reports, uh, 7 o'clock CNBC. You can also hear him on the radio Saturday nights at 7 o'clock on W.